Um, I actually think that the constitution that we have and those constitutional provisions have done a lot in reducing the level of ethnicity in our elections. And while a lot of people argue that ethnicity is still central to the elections in Nigeria, funny enough, I actually have the opposite view. Where we are today is that we have two political parties that are national in scope. Okay? And it is precisely because we have two political parties that are both national in scope that it is very unlikely that at the end of next week one party wins with a huge majority. Okay. That to me is a sign actually of progress. And the fact that we have for the first time in Nigeria an election in which each party is seriously fighting in every single state and one in which each party believes that it will get 25% of the votes in every single state, okay? That to me is positive. It's a very positive thing. And the fact that, that, um, that um, you have um, Muhammad Buhari, who is campaigning energetically in, in southern states. We've had uh, President Goodluck Jonathan, who's campaigning energetically in northern states. That is, for me, a very positive development. And I think that the emergence of two parties, as I said, national in spread, is very positive. And so I think we're all, there's a lot of tension and fear and, uh, within Nigeria right now as to what will happen. But um, if next week goes well, and we are in uncharted, uncharted waters because all previous elections in Nigeria had a rough idea who was going to win, the issue was the gap. So there is a fear in Nigeria. This is the first time at which it may not be clear. But funnily enough, that is supposed to be normal <laughs> in most other countries. You're not supposed to know Obama or Romney, who is certain to win the Conservatives, or Labour, who is certain to win. So, I, you know, again, I'm sorry, I look at it positively. Um, it is a challenge for all Nigerians, and in the next couple of days, we will, um, we will know whether or not as a country we have become mature enough, whether or not we have the police, the, sec the army, the um, members of the, uh, the um, INEC, the election tribunals, the po political parties, whether there are enough people in those parties and in those areas to behave in a mature way that will allow us to allow people to express their will through voting to have those votes counted, to have a decision made based on the votes that were counted, to have the, vote, the, the decision accepted, to have the winner show magnanimity and not to treat the loser as an enemy and have the loser also accept the result with a sense of humility and still regard himself as part and parcel of the building of a country. And I think that the next week will test whether or not we can achieve all of these things. But that we have gotten to the stage where there is a competition between two parties and it's not clear who's going to win is for me a very positive development. And so let's hope that after that we can take several steps forward from there and not have steps backwards because some people either don't believe that people's votes count, some people don't understand that rigging is effectively rape, political rape, effectively. That what it, what it is saying is that you don't think that other people's opinions count, or you feel that you have the right to force yourself on others, and that um, the importance of voting in any society is that it is the mechanism by which People can state, are they happy with the government? Are they not happy with the government? Do they think this party can do better than that party? And have their views translated into action, which only encourages the next government 
to think about performance because it knows that it has to become accountable to the population and to the electorate. Okay, so thank you so much, Hakim Nawasabi. Thank you very much, Ebon.